Hi, welcome to another episode of MYD Global. I'm your host, Leanne hackman Carty. In today's episode, I speak with Rooney Kelmera. Rooney's an economist based in Curaçao, which is just north of Venezuela. He's part of the ABC Islands. So I'm talking to Rooney about data, the importance of data in making decisions, whether it's a business or a community, and also about how to make smart investments, both now and in the future. So stay tuned. Hey, Rooney, good to see you today. How are you doing? Great, great, Leanne. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's a pleasure. I know you and I are both involved with the Island Innovation Forum, and I wanted to take a chance to talk to you a little bit about what you're seeing in Curaçao and uh, elsewhere in the Caribbean. So before we get started, can you just talk a little bit about your background? Yes. Okay. No. So I, I am a dreamer. I like to dream about the future, about a better future state. I'm a big percussionist. I like uh, to play... Uh, 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 percussion, congas. I'm a trainer. I train, uh, I give training. I like to educate people to, to share my knowledge. And as last, I'm, a, I'm an economist. So I turn, I turn data into analysis so that people, businesses, NGOs, that they can turn, uh, create the right uh, policies. So that's what, that's all the, the different versions of me. And I live in Curaçao, beautiful Curaçao. I, I think this is the first time I've met an economist that plays the conga, like the drums. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Um, yes. So yeah. I wanted to talk about, you mentioned data. I know a lot of people, you know, communities, businesses, they don't take data as seriously as they probably should. And yes. I know that's yeah. something that you're passionate about. Can you just talk about why it's so important to have good data? Now, there are at least, I think, five reasons why, uh, why that data is very, very important. Now, the first one is without data, you don't know what happened. So that's the past. You don't know what happened, what happened in the past. Uh, imagine you are, you are driving somewhere and you don't have data how many mileage you, you, have, uh, you have done. You don't know how far you are. Uh, with, without data, you don't know... Uh, the, the, the current situation where you are. So you are just flying blind all over the, all, all over the place. And especially for businesses, etc. you want to know the current situation. Uh, without data, you don't know where you're going. You don't have the targets. So data is also when you're setting a target, you want to grow, you want to become more resilient. You need to measure that and that you do that with data. Um, without data, they don't take you serious. So if, imagine you're, you, if you are a, a business owner and you want to have a loan to invest into you, your, your company or you are an NGO and you don't have any data about how many people you are supporting, how big the grant is going to be, you don't have any data. So then people will not take you for, for serious. Um, they don't take you seriously. So data is very important to measure, to measure where you have been, where you are, where you want to be going. And actually I do most of the things, I first start with data. I start with analyzing the data, analyzing a graph, etc. You can learn a lot about, uh, about uh, where you are, where you want to be with data. There are a lot of people, they, they don't want to discuss data and they just talk about <laughs> certain things. But I always uh, urge businesses, NGOs, to get the data about their main processes. And that's critical. I know when we're dealing with uh, various communities after a disaster, one of the things is, is what do you have on your business community? What data do you have? Do you, do you know how many businesses you, you have? Who they sell to? Who's in their supply chain? Or how many employees do they have? All of that information, if you don't have it, then, and a disaster happens, it just makes it that much harder to move forward. Yes. Um, the, the other thing is obviously an economic impact, and that's something that you would know a lot more about than myself, but when this, you know, communities are, are devastated after disaster, they're being asked by government, what's the economic impact? 
Yes. So, so an, an example, an example, Leanne, when you hear about there are 20 million extra people in the United States unemployed, and that has never been so much before, then if you are a community and you are dependent on the United States, 20 million it has never been like that, even in the, in, the, in the recession, in the big depression, it has never been like that. When you hear that United States, they had 3.8 um, percentage of unemployment, and now it's already going to 15%, and then it might be to 20%. So that data is already telling you that it's going to be big. When you hear about China or Europe, Europe, and I heard last Canada, that it's going to contract with 7.5%. So the whole economy is going down with 7.5%. And that is also in Europe, they first came with, it is 7.5%. And then somebody from the IMF, the, the highest, uh, Ms. Christine Lagarde said, it's not 7.5%, it's 15%. So <laughs> you see how big the impact is with data. So just giving you, your, your viewers, a, a, a sense of some indicators, how, how big that, uh, what, what that is. So it, it, those, those data, they tell me that it's going to be a huge effort for your resiliency. Your resiliency has to, has to cope with a situation of 20 million people or with a situation of minus 7.5 percent of, of, of the economy going down. That's where the whole data issue comes back into the play. So, so if this is what we know is happening, uh, looking at various trends, various, you know, where's this industry going? Where's this industry going? Being able to understand what some of those trends are going to be, uh, because there's going to be a post-COVID economy. And so where are those opportunities that may not have been there before? But data should drive some of, if not all of those discussions and decisions. And so someone like yourself could be extremely valuable as communities and businesses are starting to, to come out of their holes and, and look for opportunities. Um, one of the things too uh, you look at, and I know I look at as well, is this whole thing resilience, this word. How would you define resilience? I would, I would define resiliency, the financial aspect then, I would define it as how many months can you survive if all your external revenues, et cetera, drops? Understand? How if, if you have a job, how many months can you survive if you lost your job? Is it like one, after one month you are already, you have to sell the house? or after one month, your kids cannot go to school anymore. You see, so I, I'm trying to, to, to define that resiliency in a metric. Uh, and, and if you look at the total, uh, the total economy, uh, resilient of, a, of an economy, it's all, it also has to do with those kind of things. If it's your finances, are they okay? Do you have a huge debt? Uh, can you pay your salaries you see um and then there is also an aspect of resiliency with environment etc the sustainable development goals um i'm not i have not yet defined the resiliency with the with the environment but i would say if you are generating a lot of money uh, jobs etc is your environment resilient is can your environment cope with all those tourists uh, all that uh, all those hotels, et cetera, et cetera. Where would you think would be some smart investments right now for people to be thinking about? Yes. Now, okay. So in general, I would say you have to invest in education. You have to always invest in education, even in these, these uh, situations, because when you invest in your education, you will be more able to survive because the world is changing uh, so much. So investing in your own education, <laughs> that's like the first thing you have to. You are your best investment. You are your best investment because that's it. You, you need to invest in yourself. Now, invest in your financial education. That's also more specific because a lot of people, they lose their jobs 
and they don't know what an asset and a liability is. You, you, you see it? <laughs> they think I have a credit card and that is a good thing, but a credit card is a liability because it takes money out of your pocket. If you, if you have a, a, a house, a house also takes money out of your, your pocket. So what I'm saying is you need to invest in your financial literacy also in the financial literacy of your kids because that's going to make you more resilient in the future. If you just tell your kids, hey, this is a job, just work, go, go on education, go for a job. Um, they are not resilient anymore because jobs are lost. Uh, there was like um, Airbnb, I think they lost, they, they sent, uh, I heard, they sent uh, a lot of people home because those people are highly educated, but they just lost their job. So financial literacy now. And then for a country, the third one is uh, invest in exporting. Uh, exporting and with exporting services, exporting goods, etc. Because especially for small islands, but your viewers that are from small islands, if you don't export, then you cannot um, pay for your imports. Your whole lifestyle the cars you are driving the food you are eating you can only import that because um you export so you have to in invest as a nation in exporting services because with the exported services you can become part of the world you can deliver your services to the world you see so you now you have to be outside now you have to invest in new infrastructure because the world is becoming more decentralized there are there are many people they don't have um access to capital many communities don't have access to capital now there is something called the blockchain and with the blockchain i could send you ten thousand dollars right now and you can go to the groceries and you can eat you know with a blockchain um it is fast you 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 get you can receive currency so you have to you have to as a government and as, as a country as a community you you have to invest in those types of of infrastructure in the blockchain so that you you can become part of the world 24 years ago there was something called the internet and it just begun <laughs> and people didn't think that, that that it would be like this that's the same thing with the blockchain so invest in the blockchain last point is you have to one, the last second one, is you have to invest in renewables because the sun is your best friend. Tomorrow the sun will come up. <laughs> you can have a contract with the sun, it will be there. That means that if your energy is dependent on fossil fuel, you don't know what's going to happen with fossil fuel. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. Right now the oil price is very low, but the oil price can go up you see it can go up to hundred dollars uh, if saudi arabia and russia decide to lower the the supply sun wind etc you have to invest in that and then you have to invest in food so you have to invest in your in the food chain because we have seen with the, with the corona pandemic that the food chain we are very dependent on other nations now imagine the food and the health. Imagine that the food prices go up. You have to um, uh, um, um, you have to invest in that. So so those are the the, the topics I would invest in. Okay. Well, and I think for most island communities in particular, I think it was Puerto Rico imports ninety percent of their food, and so you just think so when you have a natural disaster happening or even COVID, no access to that transporting into your community with the goods, that's a huge vulnerability. So that whole food security issue, that's a whole other topic to look yes. at for sure. And then, so the oil, because you mentioned Puerto Rico, I know that the food bill, so from the total imports, the food bill and the fuel bill, the fossil fuel bill of the Caribbean, I know for sure for Puerto Rico, it is a high uh, percentage. So you have to eat because they don't produce their own food. So you have to eat and you are dependent on, on uh, 
on the fossil fuel. So when something things happen, your tourism goes down, you don't have the dollars anymore or the euros to buy the oil, to buy the food. So you are not resilient anymore. So I'm not saying we should all produce our own food, etc. But we should think about uh, where does your food uh, come from. And uh, there are a lot of people doing aquaponics or doing anything. So if you are a community, think about your food. Because if your uh, currency devaluates, becomes less in value, you still need to import that food. You still need to import that oil. And I'm thinking about right now, should I put a, a, a solar panel uh, and go drive a, a electric vehicle? Because <laughs> if, the food, if the fuel prices go up, then I cannot drive my car anymore. I think each, each location has its own unique challenges. Uh, solar maybe makes sense for some people where it doesn't in other places or electric, like the wind. I mean, it just, it all depends where you live. I look in where I live. It can get very cold here in the winter and there's not a lot of options to stay warm other than coming to visit you. Uh, so I think all of this, there's no black and white. I think it's just what's right for your community, what makes sense. And then of course, that's what you should be looking at to be resilient. Uh, just as we wrap up, is there any last minute thoughts that you want to say something maybe you didn't mention? I would say, I would stress again, invest in yourself. The, 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 the financial literacy is one of the biggest things that, um, that, that are important right now. And I would say, I don't want to scare everybody, but uh, I would say this COVID pandemic is just like, it's a temporary thing, but there are things happening on the long run. Um, people are creating a lot of currency. Uh, today I saw that uh, the, the Federal Reserve creates a lot of, I think, three trillion currency, they tri tri three trillion money. So that is going to affect all of us. You understand? So you have to become resilient. You have to, uh, I would say, everybody who doesn't have your, your, your free uh, stuff about how to become resilient, etc. There is something happening with the financial system and the financial system. You cannot just say, okay, I have my money and the government is giving me money. I'm happy. What is the value of that money if everybody is printing that? So that's a whole other uh, uh, conversation. But I, that's something I'm focusing on uh, right now, uh, the, the last uh, time. So I want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time. So all the best and stay in touch. Mm -hmm.